In John 8, verse 54, Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say He is our God. Now, Jesus is not self-seeking. He praised the Father to glorify Him so that He might in this way glorify the Father also. And that is because the Father is glorified in and through the Son. So the question right now is, how exactly the Father is glorified in the Son? How? It is through the cross. The way Jesus glorifies God is mainly through the cross. Surely, brothers and sisters, the Father is glorified in the resurrection. The Father is glorified in the ascension and exaltation of Jesus, but it must surely include the cross. Apart from the sacrificial death of Christ, the Father would not be fully glorified. Why? Again, because we sin against God, and sin must be atoned for. Sin must be paid. The wages of sin is death. Without Jesus Christ fulfilling the redemptive sacrifice on the cross, the Father would not be fully glorified. And the cross might be a symbol of shame during the time of Jesus, but it is the symbol of glory to the Christian. That is why in John 7, Jesus said to his legal brothers, and, and I would like you to notice this, John 7 verse 6, Jesus said to them, My time is not yet here, but your time is always opportune. And then in John 12 verse 23, Jesus answered to them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Take note here that Jesus refers to his death as the hour for him to be glorified, not the hour merely to be crucified. And when the leaders took Jesus captive in the Garden of Gethsemane, shortly after this prayer, he said to them, While I was with you daily in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this hour and the power of darkness are yours. If we summarize these three verses, the truth that we can get is that the chief priest and the Pharisees considered considered the death of Jesus as, as the hour of Jesus' defeat, but actually in the Father's perspective, it is the hour of Jesus' glory. Have you realized, brothers and sisters, that indeed the darkness and the forces of Satan had its own hour, had its own hour, and in the life of Christ, its hour was the taking of the Son of God, scourging Him, rejecting Him, and crucifying Him, and killing Him. And yet God took the very same hour and showed that it's really not the hour of the enemies of God. It is the hour for the Son of Man to be glorified. This removes then all the self-centered mindset among us that the cross is not chiefly for us or about us. The ultimate purpose of Calvary is not the salvation of man, but the glorification of God. Remember that. The ultimate purpose of Calvary is not the salvation of man, but the glorification of God. That is why no wonder Paul would glory in Christ and in his cross when he said in Galatians 6 verse 14, but may it never be that I would boast except in the cross of Christ, of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Our Lord prayed to be glorified so that He might glorify the Father. And this glorification is not easy. It came with a price and the price is the cross. And He paid the price for our sins. He suffered God's eternal wrath. And that is why we can never fully comprehend the magnitude of Jesus' sacrifice, but we can glory in it. We can understand it and celebrate it. Now, the, the unbelievers may glory in their shame, as the Bible says, but Christians find glory in the shame which our Lord Jesus Christ bore for us on Calvary. 